Welcome back, Waltham High. I'm Brianna Pantalone. And I'm David Santiago. Attention all members of the senior class. The senior social is approaching. Tasha and Brianna went to the Paint Estate last week to get more information. Let's check it out. Thanks, David. Right now, Brianna and I are here at the Robert Tree Paint Estate. This is the location where the senior social will be held later on this month. The social will be held on December 21st from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. Let's get the scoop from students and faculty involved on the social. What is the senior social? Uh, the senior social is just this big event at the Paint Estate where anyone in the senior class can come. There's going to be a big buffet-style dinner with turkeys, lasagna, all that stuff. There's going to be DJs, people can dance. It's going to be like a semi-formal event, so like the boys will wear a shirt and tie, the girls will wear like a dress. It's just a time to get together with the senior class and make some new friends. Um, it's a senior class dance, and I chaperoned at it last year. It was really fun. Everyone dressed nice. The food was amazing. Um, there's a DJ. It's three hours long, and it's at the Paint Estate. It originated 26 years ago. Uh, kind of a funny story. My office was that year. I had three girls and a boy. And the girls came to me, and they wanted to run a holiday event that would give them an excuse to buy a dress. And they said, can we have some kind of event that, so we can go out shopping for a dress? And I said, what do you have in mind? And they said, what if we have a senior holiday party? And I said, yeah, we could try that. So we, um, we got the Paint Estate, and we've had it ever since, and it's one of the most successful senior events. Do you plan on attending the senior social? Yes, I do. Yes. I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. How does the senior social benefit the seniors? It's just one of those things that you remember uh, your entire life because it's the memories you made when you are a senior. What is National Honor Society's role in the social? Um, we're planning it along with student council. So like we're raising the money. Tickets are $25. So it's just like getting the word out and just setting up everything to get ready for it. We plan the dance, but the whole senior class is invited. What made you want to attend? Well, it's one big uh, event for the seniors. Instead of like NHS, the just a select group of kids, it's everyone. So I think it would be like a good experience to like bond and talk to other people. Uh, you know, get to hang out with our classmates. We're graduating. A memory. I think it's a great thing for all the seniors to get together around the holidays, and it should be fun. Because it's a good time for me to get together with my fellow senior classmates and make memories. It's a great time to like meet your new classmates, bond with them. It'll be really fun. It's going to be a rocking time. And that's the senior. We caught up with Zach last week about the new trampoline park. Let's go to Vanessa to get an update on the progress of launch. Thanks, David. As you can see, we're here at Launch Trampoline Park getting a closer look at the progress that they've made since last week. Let's get a closer look. All right, well, come on over. Um, right here is going to be our kitchen area. Obviously, back in there, that will be where we make the food. Out in front here, there will be a counter where we actually serve the food. That's that part. Um, over here. This is going to be our basketball court area. We're going to have three or maybe four basketball hoops that are going to be set up right here, NBA style, backboards and courts and everything. All right. One of our two uh, dodgeball courts. This is not going to be our extreme dodgeball court, but uh, more likely for like the little ones. So that's that. Um, if you look over here, one of the things that we're going to pride ourselves on is we have a lot of party room space. Over there is our main party room, and then we have three private party rooms right here. So we can have, say, two or three parties going on there at one time. And then, of course, you know, so we can have five or six parties going on within one at the same time. In this area, this is going to be one of our, this is our featured attraction. Um, this is going to be what we're gonna call the launch tower. And it's going to be an actual free fall. If you've ever noticed in the movies where they have um, the, the, the stuntmen jumping out of buildings into the stunt bag, if you see the behind the scenes footage, that's exactly what they're gonna jump into is a big old stunt bag. Yeah, the yeah. Giant, like blow up. Yeah. yeah, and that's what that is. Came from California straight from uh, one of the uh, movie studios. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I tell you what, let's go on up the steps here. This is our main court. Um, one of the things that we are going to have that the other parks, uh, I believe that they do not have, is in the middle of it. You can see right here, there are three sections where uh, you don't have the actual cross beams like you do on the rest of, the, uh, rest of it. That's going to be like tumble runs where you can actually flip a lot, you know, just going back and forth, back and forth. So that's that. Um, as you can see, it's huge. That is our... That is our main jumping court right there. Over here, 
This will be our kids court. Oh, by the way, up there, that's our Jumbotron. <laughs> yeah. My name is Ronnie Schrantz. As you can see, I'm actually from Maryland. I've been here for about three years, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> How are you liking this so far? I'm loving it. It's, uh, it's kind of like the job that you never knew that you always wanted, you know? <laughs> are you gonna be jumping on the trampolines when they're done? I'm gonna be jumping on the trampolines every day. <laughs> um, yeah, it's gonna be hard to keep me away from them. <laughs> it's gonna be my little morning routine, I could imagine, so yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Good luck to you guys. As you can see, that's all we have for today. I want to give a huge thank you to all the guys that were working here and all the guys that we met. They were awesome. Thank you so much for having us. And, well, that's all. I can't wait to see the progress that they come up with and when it's all open. All right, thanks. I'm Vanessa Feely. We thanks, Vanessa. The WHS Festival of the Arts is today, December 11th. The art show and small ensemble performances are 6 p.m. through 7 p.m. and the holiday concert is 7 p.m. through 8.30 p.m. Today at Waltham High School, there will be the Festival of the Arts. Outside the Robinson Auditorium here in the foyer, from 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock, there will be an art show and small ensemble performance. From 7 o'clock to 8.30 p.m. in the Robinson Auditorium will be the holiday concert. Uh, I'm Mr. Barbas. I'm one of the music teachers here at Waltham High School. The Festival of the Arts is, it started out as just the holiday concert, just the musical groups, and we added um, an art show to it and we've added some extra music to the prelude before the concert. So what happens is we start about six o'clock and the artwork is all set up in the auditorium lobby. Hi, I'm Mrs. Carson and I teach um, choral and music classes here in Waltham High School and I conduct the concert choir and the freshman choir. The first part is a little bit more of a coffee house feel, smaller ensembles, such as the show band, the guitar ensemble, jazz ensemble, etc. And then the larger ensembles perform in the auditorium starting at 7. And then we have a big combined finale with everybody in it at the end. Um, I think it's going to be a great concert. I'm really, really excited about both the choirs that I direct this year. They're fantastic. They're making beautiful music. They're doing a wide variety of of genres. In the spring we're doing some stuff from Pitch Perfect, which we're really excited for. It's been interesting with the band because we've missed a lot of rehearsals. We're throwing things together pretty quickly at this point. There's something really uh, special about making music together. Uh, we have students from all different grades, all different backgrounds, and basically the choirs are here so that you can come and make music during the day. Um, the choirs that I do don't have any after-school commitments other than the concerts, so kids really do just come in from all different parts of life here in Waltham, and they come and make beautiful music together. It's special to me for a couple of reasons. One is I'm just sentimental, and I love the holidays, and I love all the music that comes, comes with it. Um, the kids are usually really nervous because it's their first big performance of the year, um, but I think it's going to be a really good concert. Um, the choruses sound great also, um, the strings are, are really good this year and I'm very excited about it. Hope to see you guys here. George from Christos, WETV, back to you. Many of you have probably heard of Waltham High's Cardio Club, created two years ago by our very own Annie Jean Baptiste. Let's send it over to Ethan and Max to get more information. Thanks guys. Cardio is a great fun way to stay in shape, be active, and have fun. Luckily, Waltham High has a cardio club that students and teachers can get involved in. On Wednesday, December 10th, the cardio club will be holding its first meeting at 2.10 until 3.10 in Mr. Russo's room number 166. I caught up with Annie Jean Baptiste and a few students to find out more about the cardio club and ways to stay in shape. What is cardio club? Cardio club is a fitness club to have fun and to stay in shape. Um, some ways to stay in shape are going for runs and going to the weight room, just playing sports. Um, staying in shape, well, you can go run, jog, work out, pee pee, you know, get a good diet. Why should people do cardio club? Um, people should do cardio club when you're in your off season, if you don't do a sport, or to keep moving and to move and groove all the time. What, what activities do you do in the club? 
you do? It varies on the days. We could go for a walk, we, we do video workouts, etc. What are the benefits of staying in shape? Um, you feel better. You, like, when you wake up, you, you're more awake. The health uh, that comes with it, you know, you're obviously a lot more healthy, a lot more, uh, you're obviously a lot less likely to become sick. Benefits? Um, there's a lot. I mean, you get healthier heart, healthier lungs, healthier brain. Um, you know, you're just physically more fit, look better, get stronger. Well, we are having, and this week, on Wednesday the 10th, we are meeting in Mr. Russo's room in room 166 to have a fitness workout. Just a reminder, progress reports come out tomorrow. To see how to get those A's and B's, let's check in with Zach and Catherine for some helpful tips. There are many students here at Waltham High who learn in different ways. I caught up with some students and teachers to see which forms of studying are most helpful to them. How much homework do you get each night? Um, probably like three subjects. At least like two worksheets per class. How often do you study for tests? Um, it kind of just depends on the subject. Like for math, I don't study for it. It's just something I need to know. Barely any time. <laughs> um, like a half an hour or like less than that. Maybe one or two hours a day. Um, depends on like what the class is. How do you study? Um, I review my notes and like the study guides that they give me. Flashcards. I just go over my notes and like worksheets and stuff that we did in class. Um, I reread my notes and I type them. And I answer questions in like textbooks. I just look over my notes, rewrite them sometimes. Do you find that studying helps you to get a better grade on tests? Yeah, sometimes. No, no, not at all. Yes, it does. Yes. Uh, yeah, I guess it helps. I would say anyone that wants to take a foreign language, you just need to practice speaking. So if you can find a native speaker, work with them. If you aren't having very much luck doing that, maybe you can join the French club, Latin club, Italian or Spanish club. Um, we always are practicing the language. Miss Vicenzi went on to say that getting as much exposure to a foreign language as possible is key in learning that language. Hmm. Well, first, I would ask them to review all of their materials, and then I think one of the best things for them to do is to work with a partner or a study buddy and each other, ask each other questions so that they can um, hear it and speak it at the same time and learn in two avenues. Experts say that highly effective studying habits are to study in quiet, isolated areas, bring only the tools necessary for studying and nothing else, make an outline studying schedule to stick to, and to practice with friends and play memory games. Back to you, David and Brianna. Thanks, Zach. Just to keep in mind, Student Santa Day is December 22nd. Make sure to donate. Speaking of donating, if you have any books, CDs, or DVDs you don't want anymore, bring them to donate to the library. Let's find out more from Kelly and Emily. I'm inside the library to meet up with Ms. Benenti to find out more about the book chair. Hi, Ms. Benenti. Hi. Can we talk about the book fair? Absolutely. What is the Bookshare? So the Bookshare is a fun event um, where students and teachers can donate those old books that are just hanging around their house to the library. And then we have this one day event where we provide free books, free food, um, and have music on. And students can come and take as many books as they want. They can browse all these donated books and just take a whole bag home with them. Have you heard about the library Bookshare? Yeah, they just talked about it at an assembly. They have, it's when you donate books and then you go to the library and there's free books and free food, so it's just a great time. Yes, I have. Have you heard about the library Bookshare? Uh, no, I have not. Nah. It's a library party where kids can donate books and pick up free ones and there's free food. Would you consider going? Yeah. Yeah. So would you consider going? Uh, yeah, why not? So you can donate books, obviously, um, but we also take, if you have old CDs that, um, that you want to donate, DVDs um, as well we're accepting. We should, actually, last year we even had some games, so like if you have board games hanging around your house that nobody plays and you want to donate them, feel free. Would you go? Absolutely, I would definitely go. You should, you'll, you'll see me there. Maybe. Yeah, definitely. What kind of turnout are you expecting? 
Well, last year we had about like 75 people come, which was awesome. I think it was the free food. <laughs> um, but we will have free food again. And I'm hoping to even top that number um, this year. We've asked some local businesses like Market Basket and other places um, to donate food. But more importantly, our culinary department is making holiday cookies. So we're going to have all different types of cookies and, again, music. And it will be really festive. So please come. <laughs> Do you think it's a good way to get kids involved? Um, yeah, I'd imagine. Um, yeah, for sure. It just helps the Waltham community as a whole. Yeah, it definitely is. It's a way to get everyone like, with reading. It's very like underrated and I don't know, just like a fun thing to do. Is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, no, just please think about donating um, because you know it's it's great if the teachers donate, but they might not read the things that you know you guys want to read. So think about just passing along your books, and so they can take on a life in somebody else's hands. So um, hope to see you there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Everyone likes to listen to music. To find out more about music at Waltham High, let's go to Tamara and Regina. Here at Waltham High School. We see students constantly listening to music in and out of class. Sometimes it can affect the way they learn. The average iTunes user spends about $40 a year. We caught up with some students to get their take on music. Where do you download your music? I get it off iTunes. Um, Google Play. YouTube Converter, something like that. Any other app that has like free download? Have you ever downloaded music illegally off of YouTube? I try to, but then I got confused and couldn't figure it out. Uh, yes, every day. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> How many songs do you download per month? Only a couple. Uh, 300. A month, about like 15 probably. 15? What? Yeah. Uh, it's like 56 or something, like a little bit more. Do you only download music or do you also spend money on apps and videos? Um, you should just music. No, I buy apps and stuff. Hmm? Uh, well, I mean, I only had to buy the app once, so I mean, like, after that, everything's free. Do you listen to music during class? No. No? Yes. Uh, sometimes, not all the time. Yeah, I listen to it all the time. Like, <laughs> I don't even get it. Do you get in trouble when you listen to music during class? Not if I'm careful. Sometimes, yeah. Um, depends on the teacher. I mean, like, some are strict, some aren't. Okay, thank you. iTunes has proven to be the number one source of music oh. with over 25 billion songs sold, 200 million TV episodes, and 60 billion apps downloaded. Apple has 88% of the legal music downloads in the United States. 1.2 billion tracks were illegally downloaded in 2010. Statistics show that 79% of students listen to music while they are doing work because they feel it helps them focus more. It is known that many teachers have issues with students listening to music on their headphones in the halls or during class. We caught up with some teachers to get their take on this issue. Do you find it disrespectful when students listen to music in class? Um, I usually don't allow students to listen to music when I'm teaching. However, when I'm when they're doing practice problems, I don't have a problem with that. Do you tell students to take their headphones out if you see them in the hallway, or do you just let it go? Sometimes. I try to, but sometimes there's other things that I need to worry about in the hallway that are more important. Where do you download your music from? I usually don't download music. I use Pandora, or I'll, I'll listen to the radio. Do you think it's disrespectful of students to have headphones in during class? While I'm teaching, yes. Yes, if I'm in the, at the board giving them notes, yes, I t make them take it out. Do you find it disrespectful when students listen to music in class? Yes, generally speaking, we listen to some Spanish music in my Spanish class, but um, yeah, they shouldn't be listening to music and being distracted with something else like that. Do you ask them to take their headphones out if you're teaching and they have them in? Yes, I don't allow them to have their headphones in class. Do you find it disrespectful when students have headphones on in the hallways too? Um, yes, it's distracting and uh, sometimes they're not paying attention. But uh, yeah, they're not supposed to. What kind of music do you like to listen to? Oh, everything. Spanish music, Greek music, English music, rap, hip-hop, reggae, everything. Where do you download your music from? Uh, mostly iTunes. Thank you. In conclusion, we found out that students very much enjoy listening to music, 
but we recommend that students be careful listening to music in class and also focus on their studies. Just in case anyone wanted to join prom committee, it's not too late. Let's catch up with Meg, Mac, and Mary to find out more about what the committee's all about. Junior prom is only a few months away, and recently some members of the junior class have come together to create a prom committee. Let's check in to see what it's all about. The and prom committee, like, we're just getting ready for all the details, money, how much we can spend, save, all on prom. Um, we discuss ideas that we have for our prom, and then we all take on certain parts of it so we can split up the work. Um, they're planning all the different aspects of the prom for the uh, for the spring, uh, such as uh, the decorations, uh, finding the site, uh, the venue for the prom, um, looking at uh, the menu and selecting the menu for the event, uh, the, and then selecting a DJ, things like that. What's your role in prom committee? I'm helping finding a DJ. I'm doing the DJ, and I'm also in charge of like helping out with like the food. Um, since I'm the secretary of the class, I just kind of oversee like all the different committees. Um, I am in the decorations board. <laughs> well, uh, me and Emma are gonna book the photographer for the prom. I decided to join because I wanted to have an input of what I want our prom to be. I thought it would be good to get involved. Like since it's our prom, we should be able to control it, so. It's fun to be a part of the prom and um, decide what we're going to do and make it our own night. Um, perfect prom be lots of dancing, good food, cheap tickets. I don't know, probably like a lot of balloons. I don't know why, I see the silver and blue <laughs> balloons, those are always nice. You know, just good music. I see like friends, music, good food, just everyone dancing around. I would say to have good food, um, a good DJ, and um, like a big enough space for all of us and to make sure that our whole grade goes so it's the best it could be. Um, other students can get involved by um, either sharing with people who are on the prom committee their ideas and their thoughts about the, um, what they would like to see for their prom, or they can certainly participate by becoming a member of the prom committee. If you want to be on prom committee, just ask and you can really just come. It's kind of open invite. Yeah. Just stop by and help out. Just come to the next meeting. Like You can ask um, me, Jimmy, Erica, or Ryan, or Mr. Antolini. How are we fundraising? Um, we're doing all kinds of different things. The, the bake sales was, was one. Um, another fundraiser that's going on is the, uh, the student Santa slash penny drive. So um, if we can raise more than what we need to offset for the student Santa piece, then that'll go towards the class treasury as well. Um, and there's a few other ideas out there as well. We have a lot of fundraising funds from last year when we fundraise through like Bruins ticket challenges and all that stuff and we have money from the bake sale, we're going to do Christmas tree pickups, a bunch of fundraising. Is there still room for people to join? Yep, anyone can join. It's everyone's in point. Even guys, like anyone can join. Absolutely. There's always plenty of room. Um, if anybody wants to come and help out, um, the, the more hands there are at doing certain tasks, then the easier it's going to be for everybody involved. What are some ideas floating around about prom? Um, I think some ideas were to maybe do it where the juniors had their prom last year. Um, to do either maybe a photo booth or regular photography and um, different themes. Um, the theme that I think we might do is the Enchanted Forest. Mainly to save money this year so we can have a bigger one next year. Um, the Post 440 is the place we're thinking about and have the whole upstairs and a really good DJ, so we're actually really excited. So we have some ideas for venues, and then DJs, we have two ideas. It's we're trying to use either someone that Alexia thought of or a cousin of a friend who goes here. We have food, we're going to do catering. That but We haven't found all the restaurants that we're going to cater from yet. And decorations, we have people who are on the committee who work at party places, so they might be able to get us discounts, so we're thinking of that. So if you want to be involved in prom decisions, be sure to join the committee. Meetings will be held every couple weeks, and prom is planned on being held March 20th. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, guys. That's all we have for today. I'm Brianna Pantalone. And I'm David Santiago. Stay classy, Waldemar.